This is a former communist country, the Soviet satellite Georgia. Today, it's a growing nation ranked even higher than America in economic freedom. <laughs> How did Georgia fairly quickly get to this after decades of poverty and misery? <laughs> My executive producer, Maxim Lott, spent months there to try to find out what can Americans learn from here? Georgia was once extremely poor because a hundred years ago, the Red Army had occupied the whole country and established the Soviet regime. Communists took ownership of all private property, farms, houses, businesses. Everything was taken and put under government control. It was a crazy time, crazy country. When Zarab Japaridze was younger, he joined these protests. Go march! These, combined with protests all over the Soviet Union, eventually took down the communist regime. But with no recent history of democracy, Georgia quickly devolved into rivals fighting for control. The fighting happened right in the middle of city streets. That left the country even poorer, and it was already poor from communism. Soviet leaders had thought they were smart enough to run the entire economy. They'd ordered Georgians to do things like produce tea. 95% uh, of tea was, uh, to Soviet Union was provided from Georgia. But Georgia was not a great place to grow tea. But after the collapse, people started to taste the Indian tea, and they realized that that tea is actually better, so nobody wanted Georgian tea. That industry, and many others, collapsed when Soviet support ended. Three-fourths of Georgian economy just disappeared right away. Central planners are never smart enough to run something as complex as an economy. Thank you. Fortunately, this eccentric libertarian multimillionaire became economy minister and had nearly free reign to make everything private as much as possible. As Georgia's former president puts it, we scrapped 90% of licensing and permits. That reduced corruption. Every license means interaction with the uh, officials. And every interaction with the official can be an open door for a corrupt request. Fadi Asli ran a food import business. Corruption was so rampant, a high-ranking official came to me one day and he told me, I have a friend of mine who's very honest and very competent, and uh, we would like him to be the chair of this anti-corruption uh, commission. But he has to pay someone $10,000 to get his job. So the ch future chair of the anti-corruption commission had to bribe someone to get his job. Georgia has come a long way since then. Transparency International says it's now less corrupt than all of its neighbors. We fired the entire police force, the entire customs office, the entire tax service. We diminished the number of agencies by half. There was a huge boom, Georgia, that turned from a failed state to a very successful state. Even some Americans noticed. Obviously, Georgia's made strides. Georgia's economy started growing 10% a year. Huge economic growth. Ivan Nachkebia saw the changes growing up. You kind of notice when people are getting rich, right? You just notice on, it on their clothes, on the way they look, on their cars, I mean, uh, the, the streets and stuff. Buildings that had once been burned were restored. Some prosperity finally came to Georgia. You'll be shocked by the difference. And now you can see McDonald's, KFCs, the stuff which was unimaginable and we could only have seen in the movies at the time. This was this kind of like, um, let's say, a uh, libertarian utopia for four years. And then the government said, OK, we are very well organized. We are already a success story. We're going to take the economy in our own hands. Politicians reverted to big government ways. They decided, we're going to get into business ourselves. And they chose 10, 15, 20 uh, businessmen who were close to the government. And they started protecting them at the expense of their competitors. Competitors like his company. Government protected his rivals by making them tax exempt. So after losing like a couple of million dollars, then I decided to stop the business. Economic growth slowed. Georgia is still very poor. Why did Georgia turn back towards big government? Because people did not actually understand why all this happened. Years of Soviet propaganda kept people from learning about free markets. 
when explaining some stuff to my parents, and they lived all their life during Soviet times. And what I realized is that you're touching something that is really sacred for them. With my parents, I just gave up. Did they vote for you anyway? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Jeparidze is now in the Georgian parliament, the leader of this libertarian party. Which stands for the values of individual liberty, property rights, free market, freedom of speech and expression. It's about how you see the world, whether you want to take responsibility about your life or you are fine with being a slave and having some kind of a master who will provide you with all your basic needs. This is kind of mentality is this what is hindering the rapid development of this country. The overall lesson to learn from Georgia? Government should not interfere with business. The government should be out. The government should be very small. It should just regulate the minimum. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to see our next one. Thank <laughs> you.